Hello, my name is Joshua Drazen. This is a video presentation for global moral responsibility. The country that I picked for this presentation is Norway. Why pick Norway? The country has been very interesting to me ever since I visited Norway for work. The country is scarcely populated, but everyone seems to know everyone. The country is also extremely clean and beautiful. Quickly got a sense of a national pride in their environment, especially how clean their water is. Norway is a welfare state, and many of the programs are paid for by the country's vast deposits of oil and natural gas. High taxes, universal health care, and education, no matter the cost, has vast support throughout the country. Find it very interesting that their taxes are extremely high, but they are used to it and support it. They don't think of their health care and education as free. They know that their high taxes pay for it. I also find it very interesting that for a country that has such a high environmental standards and regulations is willing to explore and drill for oil and natural gas to support their welfare state. I also find it interesting that Norwegians keep their personal life and work life completely separate. I witnessed a conversation between two naval personnel, one officer and one enlisted, that went back and forth from military rank to first names. When they talked about work, it was by rank. And when they talked, the conversation went to personal matters, it went to first names. This went back and forth for about 30 minutes. General facts about Norway. Norway is roughly the size of California. It covers 148,747 square miles. The population of Norway is 5,213,985, and its capital city is Oslo. The country borders Finland, Sweden, and Russia, with Denmark situated across the Stagrak Strait. Norway's government is a constitutional monarchy and the main culture is egalitarian. Why Norway has a lack of moral issues? There are many countries around the world that have a lot of ethical problems in doing business. This can make it especially hard when the business home country is operating in a host nation. Norway is considered to be an excellent country to operate and do business with because of the high ethical standards that are practiced throughout the country. There are many aspects of their culture and government that help Norway to avoid so many ethical problems that make it so difficult to do business in so many other countries. The first reason is local culture, etiquette, and customs. Norway strictly practices the egalitarian culture. Within the egalitarian culture is Jant Law. Jant Law is a main pillar within the culture. According to Jant Law, values of humility, respect, simplicity, and equality are a priority. Norwegian people are not vocal about their own achievements, wealth, intelligence, material goods, and are generally unimpressed by those who show off about such things. Within the Norwegian culture, people do not brag about their accomplishments and are not impressed by people that brag about their wealth, intelligence, and material goods. People are not judged by their social or business standings. Instead, they are valued for their honesty, respect, and goodness. Business culture. Norwegians will only do business with those they trust, and transparency is crucial in order to establish this connection. You must be willing and open to discuss all aspects of yourself, your colleagues, and your business with a potential client. Norwegians appreciate doing business with those that are reliable, stick to deadlines, and honor every meeting with good communications and by being thoroughly prepared. If you are late, unreliable, or display any lack of professionalism, the relationship can be over as fast as it started. There is zero tolerance for these actions. Make sure to request business meetings well in advance so that both parties are prepared for the meeting. Business communication is very direct and there is little emotion, small talk, or beating around the bush. During any business meeting, make sure to be honest and open about your expectations. You should not pressure any client into making a decision on the spot. Making decisions are based on consensus and compromise. 
When presenting any material to a business meeting, the material should be backed up by facts. There is no bartering or, and discounts are rare. A fair and honest proposal should be presented the first time. Within the workplace, hierarchy is uncommon and democracy and equality is valued. Hierarchy in the workplace is usually flat as equality and democracy are valued. Business is conducted on a first name basis, informal dress code, with the one exception is the expectation of high end banking and finance environment. Norway's laws also have a big impact on why there is a lack of moral issues. Norway has been ranked as one of the least corrupt countries in the world. Their penal code helps facilitate this ranking. The Norwegian penal code criminalizes active and passive bribery, trading influence, fraud, extortion, and breach of trust and money laundering. This law applies to anyone that is registered in Norway. This law carries with it a 10-year prison term. This law even applies to those who are conducting business overseas. A company can also be held liable for individuals acting on behalf of the company. Facilitation Payments are prohibited and gifts of hospitality can be considered illegal depending on their value and the intent of the gift. Moral Issues in Other Countries There are many moral issues that exist around the world. There is not one country that exists without their own moral issues, but some countries do a better job managing these moral issues than others. Norway has been at the top of this list for many years. Norway has figured out a way for businesses to exist without having to deal with the organizational moral issues that many other companies have to deal with operating in other countries. The first moral issue that is very rare in Norway is bribery. The moral issue of bribery is a form of corruption that can exist on all levels within a country. It can exist in government and can also exist on the corporate side of business. Bribery can prevent sustainable development violate human rights, and can fuel the exclusion of companies that refuse to participate in bribery. Norway has developed a culture to where bribery is not necessary. Businesses are able to compete for contracts and conduct business on a daily basis with a very low risk of encountering bribery. Bribery is also not necessary to succeed in the business world. Norway has been able to manage this through laws and following the business culture that is common practice throughout Norway. The Norwegian Penal Code criminalizes active and passive bribery, trading, influence, fraud, extortion, breach of trust, and money laundering. This law is even enforced for corporations operating in other countries. In the egalitarian culture, people and business are valued for their honesty, respect, and goodness. This is also carried throughout Norway's business world. Equal opportunity. There are many countries around the world that do not give women the same opportunities that men are given. Sometimes this comes from traditions and what roles are traditionally filled. China is an example of one of these countries. In 2018, women made up only 9.4% of board directors from publicly traded companies in China. This is compared to 42% in Norway. China also has a large gender pay gap. Women earn on average 36% less than men compared to Norwegian women at 21% for doing similar work. Ranking in the bottom third of the Global Gender Gap Index for China. Business hierarchy is hard to find in Norway. Workplace equality and democracy are greatly valued. Workplace freedom and responsibility are popular. Norway passed a law called the Working Environment Act. The act pro prohibits direct and indirect discrimination. Norway also has equality and anti-discrimination tribunal. Norway's culture also helps in equal opportunity. Two of these values are equality and respect are high priority within the culture. Moral principles for bribery. The first moral principle is honesty. According to Lecture 2A, honesty is the duty to keep one's promises and contracts and not to engage in deception. Honesty is one 
the moral principles that embodies the egalitarian culture of Norway. They want to know what they see is what they get. All information should be presented up front so that the rational decision can be made. Any contract, offer, or bid that is presented is expected to be fair and should be the best offer the first time. Organizational leaders must be willing to discuss all aspects of the business and be transparent. Norwegians appreciate business clients that are reliable, stick to deadlines, and honor every meeting with prior research. These aspects of organizational leadership in Norway uphold the moral principle of honesty. The next moral principle is justice. The moral principle of justice, according to 2A, is the fair treatment of everyone in the community. It is the distribution of benefits and burden fairly to everyone in the community. This moral principle also applies to organization-specific moral principles of equal opportunity. Bribery can cause a lack of e equal opportunity within the business culture. Businesses with large amounts of money can unfairly buy their way into contracts and influence people that are in a position to affect people's lives with the decisions that they make. The way that the government is set up in Norway and the business laws that are in place, there is no need for bribery. Everyone is treated fairly and all business gets an equal opportunity for contracts. Bribery is just not necessary for a business to be successful in Norway. Stakeholders in the case of bribery. The stakeholder view According to Lecture 3b, is anyone with an interest in the policies and actions of a business. The primary stakeholders for the moral issue of bribery would be management, vendors, and the company shareholders. I say this because typically bribery is seen at these levels. There's an expectation in Norway to be honest, upfront, and deliver your best offer first. There is little to no negotiation, and discounts are not a common factor in business dealings. Since bribery is so uncommon, managers, vendors, and company shareholders don't even have to think or worry about bribery. Norway has built a business culture to where everyone has a fair opportunity to bid on contracts and start up new businesses without having to bribe anyone for permits or business licenses. Now that we have identified the relevant stakeholders, what are their the stakeholders' interests? For management, trust and keeping business relationships. Norwegians will only do business with people they trust. Business deals are purely transactional and they will take their time with decisions. Bribery will cost trust to be lost in the loss of business. For the vendors, being honest with prices and products. Being transparent is a must. The best price for the service is or product is expected to be presented the first time. And for company shareholders, keeping the company profitable. If trust is lost, then no one will want to do business with the company. Hypernorms and legitimate norms. Hypernorms help to define the moral issue of bribery in Norway because Norway has a culture that is based on the respect for human dignity, respect for basic rights, and good citizenship. Their culture is also set up to where businesses can allow for autonomy, nationality, and well-being as part of daily life. Business decisions in Norway are not rushed. If all of the information is not available, a decision, then the business deal is suspended. Even if all the information is presented, a decision could take some time. Access to information to make a decision that is in the best interest of all employees so their well-being is taken care of, is built into their culture. This is how the lack of bribery in Norway helps to define hypernorms in this country. The next is legitimate norms. Norway has built a business culture where bribery is not needed. Businesses can succeed without bribery. No matter how big or small the business is, 
all businesses are given a fair chance. Bribery may be a legitimate norm in many countries, but Norway does not agree with this. They realize that they may be necessary in other countries, but Norway does not allow corporations within Norway to participate in bribery, nor do they allow for anyone directly representing the corporations to participate in bribery. Norway would not consider this to be a legitimate norm because it is not consistent with the hypernorms found in Norway. Now that we've covered bribery, we're going to go over the moral principles for equal opportunity. The first moral principle is respect for diversity in the workplace. Respect for diversity in the workplace supports the egalitarian culture that the Norwegian people live every day. Norway still struggles to close the gap on women in the workplace. Women in management positions make up 32% of management positions. Respect for diversity in the workplace concentrates on access to workplace positions and promotions within the company. Access is not enough to promote equal opportunity within the company as an organizational leader. Organizational leaders need to actively promote practices and policies that will discourage discrimination and promote equal opportunity. The next moral principle is beneficence. According to Lecture 2A, the moral principle of beneficence is to do good and act to make people's lives better. This moral principle acts to discourage discrimination in the workplace and promote equal opportunity. Beneficence also upholds the Anti-Discrimination Act of 2006. Norway is especially committed to promoting anti-discrimination, LGBT, and human rights and annually holds the internationally renowned, highly regarded Oslo Freedom Forum Conference. Like fellow Nordic states, Norway is an egalitarian society which prides itself upon the high quality provisions of public services, low CEO to worker pay differentials, and high wages. Stakeholders in the case of equal opportunity. Hyper norms and legitimate norms. Hypernorms help to define the moral issue of equal opportunity in Norway because Norway has a culture that is based on the respect for human dignity, respect for basic rights, and good citizenship, just as in the case for bribery. Equal opportunity allows for employees to fulfill the primary goods that are found within hypernorms. Autonomy allows for employees to seek jobs and make decisions that are in the best interest for their family. Norway has a rather small population. Offering high pay and good benefits to the workforce helps in finding qualified workers. It does not matter if it is a man or woman applying for the position. Rationality allows employees to access the policies, practices, and transparency within the company to make a good decision. Finally, equal opportunity allows for mental, physical, and the social well being of organizational leaders in Norway. Next is legitimate norms. There are many countries around the world where equal opportunity is not put at the forefront of business. Some countries consider the separation of men and women, religions, culture to be a legitimate norm. Norway is not one of these countries. One of the values in the egalitarian culture, which Norwegians live their lives by, is equality. Norway believes in respect for basic rights. Norway also has laws to discourage discrimination and promote equal opportunity. Norway would not consider this to be a legitimate norm because it is not consistent with the hyper norms found within the country. References <laughs>